What's up, everyone? Sergeant Argo right here, and today I'm going to do this video about my forecast of the 2022 midterm election on November 8th. I'm going to be doing the governorship and then the Senate's prediction. But I'm not going to do the House because that's going to take way too long. I don't feel like doing that. But yeah, I'll tell you like a rough estimate. So, first, we're going to start with the Senate. We're going to fill in all of the safe first. Uh, so the thing about Utah, we have this guy, Evan McMullen. Let me show you. Can I pull up RCP too? Go for politics. Because they have some good polls too. So, as you can see, we have a third party, Evan McMullen, in Utah. He's probably not going to get to the point where it's going to be competitive. So we're going to leave that safe. And especially if you look at the polling, a lot of them have Lee up by, by a pretty substantial margin. See, so yeah, we're going to fill that in. Fill in all of these. And then... Oh, for some reason, a lot of people, there's some people that think Iowa is going to be competitive. I don't think it is, to be honest. Because, first of all, it's Iowa, and it got very, very Republican in the last, the last few election cycles. Like, especially on the presidential level. Look at this. No past elections. So, Iowa, it voted for Trump by 8 points in a D plus 4 national environment. So, yeah, it's been swinging right, and also the polls, for some reason, substantially underestimate Republicans in this, like, in the Midwest area, this little area here. So, we're going to take that into consideration, we're going to take into consideration all of these polling errors, which are very important. But at the end of the day, I, th I think I was going to go to, was it Grassley? I think it's Grassley. Grassley by, like... Oh. A lot, a lot. Over 10 points, maybe like 15 points or something. So, no. And then also, I'm going to put Ohio in the safe column. And I'm kind of iffy about this one. Because, first of all, it's Ohio. And... Just like Iowa, it is also very, very, very Republican in the last few election cycles. And also the polling substantially underestimates Republicans. So here, we're going to go to 538. We're going to look at the Ohio polling. So the polling, first of all, the last couple of uh, polls had Vance up by 10. But these other polls, in the last election cycle, they substantially underestimated Vance. Like, for, um, in 2020, they had Trump up by, like, what, 1% or something? Like, in the average. And they ended up getting, like, 8% in the 2020 election. Uh, let me, let me show you guys. Yeah, see? So, you know what, let me just show you the polling average. Compared to the actual election. Just to show you where this, where these polling errors are happening. So at the end of the day, I think it's going to go to Vance by like 10 to 12 points or something like that. So now we're going to move on to the Democratic states. These are pretty obvious. I don't really think I need to touch on these. For a while, for a little bit, I think Connecticut might have been competitive, but it looked like it might be competitive, but not at this point. So yeah, now we're going to move on to the likely Republican states. And in that column, I'm going to put... Actually, one more thing. I'm going to put Florida and safe Republican. Because the polling... Polling by itself has Marco Rubio up by a ton. A ton. This is, not, this is never going to be a competitive race. Because Marco Rubio is an electoral juggernaut. He's very good at this stuff. 
very good at winning elections. These last few polls had him up by like 12, 10 points. And again, polls in Florida tend to underestimate Republicans by a lot. Like if they had Biden winning by like what 1% and the polling average in 2020, but Trump ended up winning it by like what three points. So we're gonna put it in the safe column. And also early voting is super, super good for them right now. For the Republicans. They already have a lead there. Okay, so then we're gonna put Ted Budd, North Carolina, Republicans, as a likely in North Carolina because of the polling. That's the polling, yeah. Like look at these last few polls. Trafalgar, I, I trust Trafalgar a lot. So I tend to go with Trafalgar's polls because they tended to be very correct in the 2016 and 2020 elections. Mostly, mostly. And again, they do they, they also did slightly overestimate the Democrats in the last few cycles. Stretching all the way back to like what? Never mind. Let's move on to Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, another state that is shoot, shifting rapidly to the right, and we have Ron Johnson, who is an incumbent. And those factors alone should already indicate that this will not be a very competitive race. And Mandela Barnes, like, in a state like Wisconsin, I feel like what they should have done is ran more of a centrist Democratic candidates, like they did in Ohio, but they decided to go with somebody who was more, you know, on the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. And the last few polls, they've had Johnson up by five, six, and again, it's Wisconsin, massive polling error for Republicans. So yeah, that's why it's in the, that's why it's likely red. And for the Democrats, we're going to put Washington and Colorado. Not really much to say there. The polling agrees with me there. Smiley. And, and Washington is running a pretty good campaign. So, yeah. Now we're going to move on to the lean states. First, we're going to do Georgia. So, Georgia, that scandal happened with Walker, the Republican candidate. And it looks pretty bad. And he was trailing by a lot at one point, but somehow he made up his lead. I guess people forgot and focused more on the economy near the end of the election. So yeah. And the polls have him up by a pretty substantial margin, actually. And then we're going to put Nevada. So Laxalt, he's doing pretty good in Nevada. But the thing about Nevada that Nevada is one of those states that actually overestimates Republicans instead of the other way around. So don't take the polls, which have Laxalt up by like five or six part, because they could be skewed a little bit to the Republican side. Let me see if I could find Nevada. There we go. See, we have some of these polls that have Laxalt up by five or six. It's probably going to be more like three or two or something like that. Like they, for example, they showed Trump winning Nevada in like 2016, which obviously did not happen. What the hell happened? Anyways, now we're going to move on to Pennsylvania. We're going to put this in the lean red. Probably going to go to Oz by two to three. 538 actually finally moved Pennsylvania to the Republican column for the first time. Since like June, which is crazy. And that's because, first of all, Federman's debate performance is not the greatest. And why do I keep doing that? And also the focus on the on jobs and the economy. It's coming back into focus after the the Dobbs decision. So I do want to talk about the Dobbs decision. Later, I will talk about that, those implications. So, 
Yeah, Boz is leading the polls now. He's probably going to win. Two, three points, something like that. And we're going to move on to Arizona. Oh my goodness, Arizona. This is, this is very hard for me. I'm going to put it tilt red. Because I can see this going either way. So, yeah. So we do have some polls that have Masters up for the first time ever, from what I've seen, or e even tied. So, there has been a shift, there has been momentum towards Masters. And also, there's another polling error in Arizona that you saw with McSally. I believe the polling suggested that McSally was going to win by like 5 points or something, she only won, won by like two points so I think that will come into play here but it'll be extremely extremely close and I would not be surprised if Masters lost to Kelly at the end of the day and then now we're gonna do New Hampshire I'm gonna put them oh, this is hard okay let's go to New Hampshire I'm gonna put them in the Lena Democratic column New Hampshire is another state that overestimated Democrats in the last election cycle. And also, there's been a few polls showing Bullduck finally ahead after being after trailing a lot. So there are some indicators that point to the fact that Bullduck might pull up an upset in New Hampshire, might win. But the poll the other the polling is not exactly in his going his way. And he hasn't had a lot of good fundraising. It's just not a bad it's it's not a bad it's a bad situation for him overall. So that is where we will end with the Senate election. So yeah, after this we'll do the governor election. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I don't want to talk about the Dobbs decision and the implications on the generic ballots and all this other stuff. Here. Nope. Click the wrong thing. Generic congressional vote. So as we as we can see, uh, Republicans did start doing really well, especially after the Young can win in Virginia in 2021. And they were leading for a long time until Roe v. Were, Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Dobbs decision by the Supreme Court. And then the nation was focused on abortion, which happens to, which is an issue that happens to favor Democrats. Because most Americans support, most Americans are pro-choice. So that happens. And then, you know what? I don't have any record of me saying this. But I knew, I literally knew that this was going to be tested. Because watch this, watch this, guys. I'll just show you. I literally knew this would happen. I just wish I would have, like, you know, put something out there. Because if you look at, let's go to, like, uh, 2014. 2014. Uh, where's the genetic balance? Generic ballots. So you can see the exact same process happening here. Republicans were leading by a little bit, and then all of a sudden, they started losing. The Democrats got got the momentum. They started they started uh, putting a pretty good lead on the Republicans, and then all of a sudden. Right before the election, they somehow got this huge boost. And you know what? The exact same thing happened in 2010. I don't know why this happens. But that's, that's how these midterms work for some reason. 2010. Watch, you're going to see the exact same thing happen here. Republicans leading by a pretty good margin, and then boom, Democrats start to tie. They start to win by a little bit. And then boom, the Republicans put on this humongous lead. So yeah, I knew this would happen. I called it in my head. 
But this is my prediction. Let me know what you guys think. The election is tomorrow, so go out and vote. And we'll see what happens. Thank you everyone for watching. Oh! Forgot about Hawaii. And goodbye.